I do have uh, apologize for that technical difficulties, guys. Uh, I am so sorry about the uh, interruptions. Um, anyways, I'm gonna hear get some worship songs, so um, let's uh, hear them and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Mighty to save. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing, let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of Savior, the hope of a nation. Forever Arthur of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Since you light and let the whole world see. Raising King. Jesus. I don't know what 
Amazing grace. these fucking things, man.
it. Yeah, one more song. That's uh, he knows my name.
Sorry guys. And welcome back uh, to... Sorry for that uh, personnel thing. But, uh... I'm back. Sorry for that. So you just heard the worship songs. So I'm glad that you guys are worshiping. Um, anyways, um... So we're going to get into our message today and we're going to, we are on the book on this series called the book of John chapter 10 verses, um, chapter 10. So we're going to skip through all this and then, um, basically it's the chapter 10 is his final public address. Jesus continues teaching and uses Others, I am another I am saying with uh, with a metaphor far, which you saw we read in John six chapter six verses thirty five to explain his identity as the Messiah. Jesus uses the imagery of the good shepherd in verse eleven, which should be understood in the light of the Old Testament passage that criticize Israel's shepherds, a metaphor for their kings who have failed in their duty in the, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 through 8. If I get to it. So Jeremiah uh, read in the book of Jeremiah chapter twenty three verses one and eight and Sikirah chapter eleven verses four for seventeen and book of Isaiah chapter fifty six verses eleven and book of Ezekiel chapter thirty four verses one for thirty one. The remedy of for the failure of the shepherds and many uh, Old Testament passages is that God himself takes on the road of the shepherd of the Israel Israel in, in the book of Psalms chapter 23 verses 1 in chapter 80 verses 1 book of Isaiah chapter 40 verses 10 through 11 at the same time God promises to raise up another shepherd for for Israel who lead his people properly in the book of Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 23. Jesus depicts himself in that Messiah role of the ideal shepherd. He is both the shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep in the book of John chapter 10 verses 11 and the gateway to the eternal life in verse 7. So we're going to go to, uh, so open to your Bibles, uh, to the book of John chapter 10, and we're going to go, uh, we're going to skip ahead to verse 9, and I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible, which it was updated in 1995, uh, and, um, it says, I am the door. If everyone enters through me, he will be saved, and will go in and out uh, and find the pastures. Pastor. And verse ten says, "The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly." Verse eleven says, "I am the good shepherd." The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So in verse 10 saying, May have life and have an opinion, which is in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 25 through 31, or the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 12 through 15. And verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus fulfills the Messiah role of the shepherd this role is 
in Ezekiel is depicted and fulfilled by God. But Jesus made the claim that he, as God in flesh, is the one fulfilling it. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 23, on that, on the, I am, quote, saying in the book of John, chapter 6, verses 35. And in the parable of Good Shepherds, uh, it, there's a devotional article on that on Faith Life Software. And then Jesus I Am statements are also on Faith Life Software, too. But also it says, lays down his life, evoking imagery of his young shepherd, David risking his life to keep his his uh, sheep safe. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 34 through 37. In addition to fulfilling God's role with his people as shepherd, Jesus fulfills David's role as their king. Um, in verse uh, 14 through 15, it says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own knows me. Even as the Father knows me, I and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. So it said, The Father that knows me, this gave Jesus the authority to make the claims he does in in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 27. Uh, in verse 18 it says, It says, No one has taken away from me, but I lay down it, I but I lay it down on my own uh, initiative. I have authority to lay it down. I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I received my father. Uh, and then. Um, In verse 24 says, and it says, uh, the Jews then gather around him and were saying to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. In verse 25 says, Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify on me. So they're talking about in verse 24, saying the Jews here were burning to the crowd in general and the religious leaders. In which we read that in the book of John chapter 1 verses 19. And the Christ in chapter 1 and in John chapter 1 verses 20. And verse 25 says, The name of my Father, which we read in John chapter 5, verses 36. So we're going to verse 27. And it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and, that, and they follow me. And then we go to verse 31. It says the Jews pick up the stones again to stone him, which they, which we read that in John chapter eight verses fifty nine a couple weeks ago. Uh, in verse thirty two says Jesus answered to them, "I showed you my many good works from the Father, for which I, which I of them are you stoning me?" But the Jews answer him. For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself out to be God. Um, first, uh, uh, so, 
So if we skip ahead to 39, so therefore, verse 39 says, Therefore they were seeking again to seize him, and he elude their grasp which we read that in the book of John chapter 7 verses 30 and 44 also to part it out of their hand which we read that in chapter 7 verses 6 and verse 40 says and he went away again beyond the Jordan to place where John was first baptizing and he was staying here uh, and then uh, verse 44 41 says many came to him and were saying while John performed no sign yet everything John said about this man was true and then verse 42 says many delivered in him there so in verse 40 says uh, another side of the Jordan Jesus leaves Jerusalem and goes to the wilderness east of the Jordan Jordan so basically in the background Basically, uh, let's review what chapter, what the book of John chapter 10 says. In the background, David was the shepherd, and the God is a shepherd in the book of Psalms chapter 23 in Ezekiel chapter 34. But the rabbis said that no position in the world is so despised as that of a shepherd. Shepherds were assumed to be liars and thieves. They were not permitted to testify in court. Jesus is going to show now the true value of the true shepherd. Sheep pens in the open country were rough rocks walls topped with thorns. Entry was through a single gateway. Sometimes the shepherds himself slept in the opening, becoming the human gate. Often several flocks were would come into the same pen and were called out in the morning by recognizing their own shepherd's voice. So Jesus described first a man who tries to sneak in by another route. He is a thief and a robber in verse 1. Such man represents both earlier false messiahs and the current leaders in the Jerusalem. Jesus prolongs this figure of speech but people do not catch on to what he mean means at verse 7 Jesus says plainly I am the door for the sheep um, like the human gate of the pen he represents the soul interest into the safety of God's folds and see if you see in chapter 14 in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6 which we'll get into that later and the access to the green pastures Jesus had come so that people can have life to the full in verse 10 this abundant life must not be misunderstood as a life of health and wealth for that is not Jesus himself and his disciples had uh, at verse 11 Jesus said that I am the good shepherd well he will only not only risk his life he will lay down his life for his sheep his sheep are not only Israel but he has other sheep the Gentiles in verse 16 Jesus clearly know that he will die and be raised back to life for his sheep. Three months later in the winter comes the Feast of the, of the Dedication, known today as Hanukkah. Uh, in in Camarotes, the victory of the Maccabees over the Antiochus. Uh, Ipinians as the Syrian ruler over the whole territory he is to, had purveyed the temple with the pig blood burned the Tawara and killed the priests 
Jesus is in the temple area walking along an open porch 15,000 feet long, 60 feet deep, and 37 feet high, called the Simoleon's Colonian. Jesus answer of uh, Jesus return to the imagery of the shepherd and the sheep in verse 28 and 30 for through 30 uh, true believers listen to him and follow him Jesus pledges to give them to eternal life and no one can snatch them out of his hand likewise no one can snatch them out of the God's hand to to be in Jesus' hands in verse 28 is the same as being God's hand in verse 29 because he and the Father are the one in verse 30. The Jews object that Jesus is claiming to be the God so Jesus tries to help them understand if scripture could call human masquerades gods in Psalms 80. Chapter 82, verse 6. How much more appropriate is in is it to call his own son God to how much more logic is common in the New Testament and Jesus himself said scriptures cannot be broken. And I say this, guys. When we end today's message in, in chapter 10, is uh, this the big idea is if a person belongs to the void of God they will hear his voice follow him and experience a bond in life there's some questions to answer to yourself how does a person get into Jesus void what kind of life did God intend for us to have? How do we experience it now? How does a person tune in to the shepherd's voice? And in personal reflection, ask yourself these questions. Is how would you describe your shepherd's voice? What characterize his tone, his words, and his demeanor? In what ways has enemy tried to steal from you, kill your joy, and destroy your life? Let's live it out this week, guys. Um, let's memorize and meditate upon John, the book of John, chapter 10, verses 10. And discuss, and then the second thing is to discuss it this week. Spend time with a friend and talk about ways that the thief steals kills and destroys in your life and how does this happen through sin in what ways are listening to a imposter voice how can you guard against defeat the fit the thief and then the third thing is journal consider your own way life do, do you believe that Jesus is a good shepherd do you believe he is one with God? Or do you believe he is one with God? Are you his sheep? Are you staying close to him? How much of the bounty of life he offers have you experienced? And how, how might you be rejected to a fuller experience of him? What is he, what is he saying to you today? And I want you to reread chapter 10 because I didn't get all the verses to you guys. Study it and come to Bible study on Wednesday and we'll talk about it. Answer, let's ask questions and I'll, we will answer it to you guys. The pastors can. And I want you guys to study chapter 11 because that will be chapter 11 and chapter 12 will be our next week's service uh uh, service about it so and I want to thank you for um, joining us um, I don't want to leave without saying without praying do you believe in Jesus Christ answer that question nothing's too hard for God 
And do you need Jesus Christ in your life today? If you answer those questions and he said yes, and you need help or you need saving, you come to the right place. I, I ask you, we do a salvation prayer. We will pray together. We will worship together. We will cry together. We will study together. I ask you to, two ways to fill out a connection card. If you come to our 3 o'clock services, um, we uh, have connection cards in the lo lobby. Make sure you pick one and fill out your information on your, if, your connection information on top. Uh, and then all the information on there uh, and then faith life software or do it online there's always uh, fill out the connection cards there so let's let's pray about our heads there dear dear Henry Father we got here today thank you for all the blessings you give us we thank you for the people that joined us today. We thank you the people who couldn't make it today for some reason. But um, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you for your word of, of, your word of, of your courage. Your word, Lord. We, we, we praise you. We honor you. We glorify you. We honor you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, but one more thing, guys. We don't want to end this service without offering to worship the Lord. So bring your checkbooks, cash, checks, debit cards, and credit cards out. Uh, we offer to worship the Lord with donate with any amount of donations, givings, and tidies. Uh, if you turn to your Bibles to the book of Leviticus, chapter seven verses 11 through 17 in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 7 you know what I'm talking about any amount guys can help us grow as a church uh, there's three ways we could do that one is to, with the, if you come to our 3 o'clock service you find an envelope in your seat or lobby uh, fill out that information on the envelope it's check and cash only and check that off and put them out on there and your contact information and put it on drop it into the uh, offering buckets uh, when it passed by and with your connection card by the way um, and if you text it and then second thing is to text it at 805-539-4439 once again, it's 805-539-4483. And then always, you can always donate, give, and tidy online on our church website, Faith Life Software. I thank you guys for joining me on this Sunday. I know it's hot out there, and I know you guys are tired and you want to get out of here, so... Thank you guys. I hope to see you guys next Sunday on our, I uh, hopefully at 11 o'clock. I hope this heat goes away. So uh, I, I, I want to wish everyone a uh, happy Labor Day, happy holidays, uh, barbecue, have a safe one there out there, and party hardy, but don't party too hard. Uh, we also want to wish you ha uh back to school for most of you guys uh, including you so I want to thank you guys for joining me see you next Sunday uh, for more of the word of God God bless you love you guys but I have to go bye